this is David for Big Bits, and in this video we're going to take a look at accounting for the commission or the fees in our strategy. Now in the past we have just uh, went along with our strategy without trying to account for any fees on trading and that's just usually not the case. Now there are some exceptions uh, with different exchanges there's different uh, fee models but uh, I usually tend to focus on Coinbase on the channel so we're going to take a look at uh, using the Coinbase fees on our trading strategy now the first thing I'm going to do here is I'm actually going to clean this indicator up a little bit we have a lot of extra features on here that we're not really looking at so I'm going to go into the settings and turn some of these off we don't really care about the second MA. We are not going to care really about the ribbons right now and we are not going to worry about the MA1, uh, 1-2 and the 2-3 crosses. We can leave our take profit and stop loss the same. That doesn't really impact things too much. Now, for those of you who haven't seen the videos yet, the green line is the 50 period daily moving average. The red line is the 200 daily moving average. And of course, if we change our resolution, it'll uh, change to that particular resolution. So if we change the one minute chart, it'll be the 50 minute uh, moving average. Now, let's zoom out, take a look at the chart a little bit better. You can see we have one trade here. If you look at the strategy tester, you can see in total on the Coinbase chart, there's only been two trades that have qualified and they both wound up in profit. But uh, as you can tell with our settings, let me bring those back up. We have a take profit percentage set at 30, but we're only seeing 28.85% profit. Uh, that is because we have accounted for the uh, commission in the strategy now. Before, if you had watched the videos, if there was a take profit, it would have been strictly at 30%. Now, that's pretty good. So let's see how this actually works. Now, all of this video is mostly well, is entirely around this particular line of code. We've continued on our strategy and we are adding more parameters on it to uh, increase the usefulness of our strategy. Now, the unfortunate thing about this is that these are all kind of set at once. So we can't really use inputs on our strategy and change these values on the fly like we could before as far as I know you're gonna to have to go in here and you're gonna to have to change these values maybe we can try that another time to see if the inputs work maybe it's a different version of pine in the future that can do that but for now you're just gonna to have to type these in and have to go with it as part of your strategy these are all the defaults that are going to be a part of this tutorial this is going to be the commission tutorial script tutorial B so that everything shows up in order on uh, trading view now the first item we're looking at is calc on every tick now what this means and let's look at our reference manual here calc on every tick which is right here this basically allows you to trade within the daily candle or whatever candle that is currently being used or being drawn on the chart. Now, this can allow you to uh, essentially trade in the areas up here in Wix where otherwise you wouldn't have. Say you wanted to trade on an RSI value. Uh, let's bring up the RSI indicator. And you can see the RSI got very high here and here, but the RSI would have been much higher if you were able to trade it during the middle of the day up here. So if you wanted to catch that RSI at even higher numbers in this wick, that would be how you would do it to have uh, every tick, every new set of data that comes in for this chart to uh, process the strategy and potentially put in a position or not. Now. Uh, there are some important things to know when you're talking about using the uh, intra candle uh, calc on every tick option and that the data in the history of the chart and I can close the RSI now the data in the history of the chart there's no way to run the back testing through the middle of all of these candles. So you see these wicks that I was talking about. There's no way to simulate what the strategy was in there because the chart that we're looking at only knows the data that it's showing, not all of the prices and the changes that happened within that candle. Uh, 
to be able to do that uh, is a bit beyond what we're looking at now. Uh, you would have to create the indicator to look at you know smaller time frames, but trade the larger time frame moves, and it's entirely possible. But we're going on uh, to talk about commission. So one of the key things to note about the calc on every tick feature is that now our strategy is showing the moving average completed all the way out to the current candle. Now before, and I'll show you this kind of live here, let's save that change, it'll take just a moment. Now if we weren't calculating on every tick, it's now going to move the, the MAs back to here because it hasn't processed this candle yet. And this takes just a moment to save. There is quite a bit of code in the strategy. Give it just a moment and there you go. And of course I'm going to have to change back all the settings that we changed earlier. But you get the picture. It moved all the MAs back because it hasn't processed this candle yet because we didn't have calculate on every tick set to true. Now I'm going to change that back. I'm going to leave the ribbons on here just because uh, we're going to be changing a couple of other values here as well later on. So they'll just come back anyway. So let's wait for this to save and I'll move our MA back onto the current candle. Now, let's actually talk about commission. And if you don't know, that is the fee that the exchange takes on every order that you make. Now, whether you're placing a limit order, which basically means you want to buy at a specific price or sell at a specific price, uh, they could have a different fee than if you told it to buy right now, which would be the uh, closest price in the order book. Say somebody wanted to sell at whatever the current price is, you could do that immediately right now. Uh, a lot of times that has a higher fee than if you place an order down here and we're willing to wait or an order up here and we're willing to wait. Uh, just keep in mind whatever exchange you're using because you will need to know the fee model for that exchange. Now Coinbase, which is what I'm going to use for the example, uses a half of a percentage point to calculate the fees for each trade and now for your basic account that doesn't have a lot of volume that applies to both the market orders and the limit orders that we were just talking about so the first thing you're gonna have to do is we have two new parameters a commission type we want to use a percentage because coinbase uses a percentage based fee and then we also need to set the commission value to 0.5 now uh, if you're thinking about uh, 0.5 percent you might be tempted to put to put 0 0.005 and I completely understand why you would do that because when you're talking about based on uh, a 100 value that would be the case but <clears throat> 0.5 is this measured based on percentages not uh, whole numbers so it's 0.5 for half a percentage if you wanted it to be one and a half percent that's all you would have to do just put the uh, integer before the decimal there. Now this is how we take care of a permission or a percent based commission excuse me. Uh, if you wanted to do a fixed fee like say you're trading uh, stocks or uh, futures on you know E-Trade or something and there's a flat fee of like two dollars per contract or something then you could put in a uh, flat fee here as well by changing the commission type. Let's go here. Let's take a look at our commission types. Here we go. They have a percentage which is what we're using. A cash per contract. So that's the example that I gave you. So two dollars per contract. That would be this example. And then cash per order. So if it only costs uh, five dollars to execute your order on the exchange no matter how big or small it is you would use this one and then you would just set your commission value to whatever that value is. So if you were uh, doing the cash per order and you were trading uh, five contracts, you wouldn't need to worry about there being five contracts. Your commission value would just be whatever the price is per contract. So if it was 50 cents per contract, this would be what you would have in there, exactly what we have now. Uh, if your per order commission type was being used, your commission value uh, would be for example five dollars per order and that would take care of the entire order as opposed to worrying about how many contracts you're actually uh, using in the order. Now 
That being said, let's take a look at the strategy tester. And this is on the daily chart. Yes. I didn't think there was this many on here, but there is. Okay. Ah, that's because I need to change my settings. Uh, we'll leave it like this. We're trading all kinds of different crossovers now. So you can kind of get an idea. Like I mentioned earlier in the video, I apologize. I was completely in the way. Let me scroll this up here. I was in the way earlier in the video. I apologize about that. Uh, but there is a take profit on the strategy of 30%, but we're only trading 28.85% when we take our profit. That's because we're using a market order, which has 0.5% fees. Now, if you're a more experienced trader, you know that there is more involved with trying to get an accurate back test and simulate a strategy than just the commissions and the fees. And you know that there is such a thing as slippage. And that is when you don't get the price that you want. Now, this is sometimes, in my opinion, a bit more severe when you're using limit orders. When the market tends to move away from wherever you're trying to enter and you want to enter it again uh, and you keep placing the orders in but there's also slippage when you make market orders when you move the price and your average price is either above or below where you got in or you or where it was signaled to go in it i should say so there is a bit more to it your average price of all your contracts uh, may not be the price where it triggered at now, for example, here, I don't have any slippage on here. So the contracts execute at this particular price, where in the real world, if you were to trade 389 Bitcoin on a single trade, you would likely move the price up or down in whatever direction you trade. Uh, that's just a fact on most exchanges, unless there's a much larger uh, order out there. Uh, this it's a fairly large order for Bitcoin at this time. Uh, so it would move the market significantly if you were moving 389 contracts. Uh, and significantly is relative. It might just be uh, a few tenths of a percent, maybe not even that much. But it does impact your profit. So it is something to keep in mind. Now, when it comes to accounting for the slippage in the strategy itself, you can see I have it set to zero. That's because I don't really care for uh, how it's being taken care of. I would love to be able to set the slippage to a percentage amount, but the slippage is actually a number of ticks, which is the uh, size increment on your y-axis on your chart for the price. So here it's one penny. So the slippage, if I set it to one, would adjust the price up or down depending on the direction of the trade by one penny so that it could, could account for those price changes due to the slippage of us moving the prices when we order. Now that's why I've included it in here. I've added several notes so that you know exactly why I did things the way they are in the strategy. And so far, I mean, it's pretty good. Like I said, you can change all the settings around to however you like. Uh, when we started the video, we only were working with the MA1 and 3. We didn't even worry about the ribbons, and we left our take profit and stop loss the same. And you can see that impacted the uh, strategy tester with the list of trades, the performance review, where, uh, in fact, you can actually see the amount of commission you've paid. So I do want to dive in just a little bit more and talk about commission when you're looking at strategies because uh, and, and this you might think this is financial advice but it's just kind of a fact of the way things work the more often you trade the more fees there are so you need to take that account into account when you're trading if you're trading these longer time frames such as daily charts the fees are not going to accrue as fast because you're not trading as quickly. Whereas if you're trading, uh, let's move this down to five minute candles. Say you're trying to trade five minute candles, they are going to accrue much quicker. You can see $35,000 now, 36 almost, instead of 2,000. That's because we got in and out of a lot more trades. But 
when you're working with these smaller candles, a lot of times the percentage movements when you enter and exit are also a lot smaller. So that's why it's very important to keep in mind your, um, and let me make sure that actually showed up for you here. Make sure my head wasn't in the way. Yeah, I think you can see the uh, commissions. Where are they? Right here. Yeah, you can see that. Uh, and let's go back to the list of trades, and I'll bring that back up here. So you can see we had our take profit and our stop loss at 30 and 15% respectively. But when you're working with these smaller time frames like this, you're getting in and out of trades quicker. So if the market doesn't move enough to account for the fees that you're having to pay, then you'll see a lot of this, a lot of red. You might have closed uh, when the price was above your entry, but due to your fees, you ended up losing significantly. Uh, and it might not be super significant. Like I believe this one is a good example, 0.66%. You're paying 0.5% fees on the buy and the sell, so you would have been in profit if there were no fees. That's another reason why, uh, this is a very good example, I should say, of why it's important to consider commission in your back testing, especially when you're trying to come up with a back test for uh, quicker time frames or resolutions such as the five minutes like what we're looking at now. Now, I'm going to call that pretty much for the video. We've covered just about everything I've went over. I'm going to be publishing this script in just a moment. It's going to be available on my TradingView profile, and you can actually see that here. It's BigBits.io. We've got over 50 followers now. It's kind of early in the channel still uh, since the reboot, and we've got plenty of scripts posted. I've posted several ideas. We've got a lot of likes going on, so check out the profile. And uh, if you like the video, please like here on YouTube. And check out the other videos in the series uh, before this one because there's a lot of the tutorials out here and you can get a good idea on how to create these indicators and strategies on your own. There's a lot of good examples on things that you can do and some notes and comments and make sure you use the uh, reference manual as well. But check out the profile, like the video, and if you like these videos, not only check out the scripts here but also check out the series on YouTube and subscribe because I'm going to be coming out with more videos uh, later on these uh, development tutorials and also uh, some other things related to trading development. So make sure and subscribe and just, you know, have a great day.